Hello YouTube, Mac back again with the next section of my Max tanks and then some. Only because there are other things other than tanks on this, but yeah, well, we'll not get into that. So, as I said in my intro video, the last step that I needed to take in order to complete my Matilda 2 tank was to paint the crew. You can see I've already got them primed here, uh, just in my little jug I use for tap water, just a tiny bit of blue tack sprayed them with primer all around and they are good to go so the next step i need to take is painting them and i've had a look at a few tutorials online and i'm taking bits and pieces of them to do a very simple paint job so for that i'm going to need a couple of things i'm going to need of course the paints so we have gun metal for the guns that uh, two of them have on their hip we have some olive drab that is for their little berets. I have two tones of a sandy colour for the uniforms they wore in Tunisia. Some flat white to mix just in case the colour isn't just right which most likely will get used for this shade of the skin tone because this is a bit too peachy for my liking. I also have some black that I'm going to be mixing with a uh, little bit of water which I have up here. I don't worry it's not discoloured it's just as you've seen I used the bottom of these to prime things on so you get a bit of spray paint on the bottom makes the colour look a little off colour but don't worry it is clear just ordinary top water and I just use this to drip my paints into my little palette here for mixing. The last tool that I will need are paint brushes. Now for the black that is being used for highlights Essentially, on I've seen on a tutorial that if you put some black highlights on each of these shadow lines before painting your colours over top, if you do the colours over top in a nice thin layer, you get a really nice shadow underneath. I've also seen a really good effect with doing washes over top. Now I have to the side here some washes which I don't have on camera at the minute, but I have them. They are Vallejo. And I'm going to do a nice mixture of those washes to put over top of this to just give a more defined colour on top of the figure when it's done. So I'm going to be using this fine detail brush here to paint those black lines on first. These four brushes to apply the colours and then I'm going to use this to apply the wash afterwards. So let's get started. When mixing colours, it's always best to start thin. Here, I've just added some simple tap water to my paint to help thin it out. If I need it any thicker, it's just a simple case of adding some more paint to thicken it. Now, I started cautiously with this technique. I've never tried it before, so I thought, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take my time. And you know, it's important to do that. Take your time with something so detailed, and eventually, it'll start to come together. So, first figuring them and first impressions are actually really good. I don't know if the face will look right, but you know, I'm never really good with faces on these, but just doing these highlights, if I do the paint over top and then add a wash to it just to catch any bits I've missed, I think this might be okay. So let's move on to the next figures. It's also important to regularly clean your brush as you paint. This prevents any residue drying within the brush and helps keep your brush tip fine. That is stage one complete. All three figures have now got the panel lining applied that is going to be underneath the coat of paint. So I'm going to be applying the coat of paint nice and thin. And I was going to go dig up a reference of soldiers in Tunisia, but thanks to the grant that you had seen yesterday, I can see right here exactly what colours that uniform is. And I can see exactly what kind of colour I'll need for the wash to go over top as well. So, let's move on to the next part, getting down the base colours. I added white to the flesh tone to lighten the shade. This helped the skin not darken too heavily with such a harsh primer and shading beneath it. This helped just maintain a cleaner colour by the end product. So the first thing we're going to do 
paint them in the flesh color because if we get any of the clothing color on the top, it'll hide any mistakes that we've made. So I just mix this with a couple of drops of tap water, as you've seen. Just to thin it out. And if I need to do multiple layers, which I can see already, I probably will. Well then, that's no problem. But as you can see, I made a little mistake. I've accidentally blotched some paint. To fix that, I just take this brush, dip it in a tiny bit of water, quickly wipe over it, grab a dry brush, and dab it away. So the first layer of flesh tone has now been applied. Just gotta wait for this to dry up, and then we can get the second one done and move on from there. So as we come back after the second coat, it looks so far so good. Maybe this technique has some truth to it. We'll see after we get on to the uniforms and get those done next. You'll notice here I'm using paint straight from the pot rather than thinning it. And that's because most of my Tamiya paints have been pre-thinned for use in my airbrush. As a result, they are the perfect consistency for applying multiple steady coats rather than one thick gloopy coat. So you can see here I have the second coat of paint applied, it's always focusing on the background so I'm just going to move this back, see if we can get everything to focus, nope, just going to focus on this guy back here, okay, well if we bring him in, there we are, and you can see the second coat of paint that those uh, shade lines are actually coming through pretty nicely. I think that technique has worked. I can still see them coming through. You can see I haven't painted all the way down because these are going to be glued in up to their where their hand line is here uh, inside of the tank. So it's not really that important that we color them in. Now the last thing we have to do is to paint the berets and the handguns. And after that it's just a simple case of putting a wash on them and that should be a simple paint job. So let's get on to it. The last details were applied with new paints I bought recently. As such, I did have to thin them, but you'll find that most Tamiya paints require only one drop of water to three drops of paint to help them get to the right consistency for multiple coats. So, now the figures are painted, the last step is to put a wash on them just to bring out a few extra details. And looking at these, I think they can do with equal parts of Vallejo black wash, drop of the rust, and a single drop of tap water just to thin them down a bit so that they aren't applying too thick because otherwise they sit very heavy. So we'll give it a go and see how they turn out. Now we're going to add to this two black. One and two. Give that a little mix. So, I like to see working from the back first. I'll work from the back of the driver because this we will not see inside the tank. So I've just got that in here. And we're just going to brush that across the top of him. You can see already that it's just soaking its way down into the details where it's going to dry up and have those stand out. So I am happy with this. I'm going to proceed across the whole figure. Just bring him right up here. You can see that now.
So, just like that, all three figures have a dark wash on them, and we will let that dry off. And once it's done, maybe just move a little bit more in here. Once that is set, these will be ready to join the tank, and then that will be the Matilda complete. So here we are back with the final result, and I put the light on this time just to uh, help you just see exactly what they look like now. But they're all finished up. So the wash across the top seems to have just helped some of the colours blend through. You can see it's helped bring out a few of the details in their faces. Now they're not perfect, far from it, but as I've said many times before, I am a beginner at this, and there's areas that aren't painted because it's going to be covered up by the tank itself. But, speaking of, let's bring in the Matilda. And let's give it a crew! And there we go. I fully completed the Tommy and Matilda with a complete crew. All painted top to bottom. So all in I'd say this tank has taken me roughly 80 hours work. Maybe more. But it's been worth it. It has been one of the funnest builds I've done. And now I plan to move on to my next one, the RFX M3 Grant. So tune in for the next video, uh, which will be me starting the assembly of the Grant. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.